Hey, what's up, everybody? Joe Simpson with Capital Bass Fishing. Have you ever wanted to buy a kayak, but they just seem to be too darn expensive? Or you might want to get into importing, buying, or selling. China is an obvious source for some of these inexpensive kayaks. A lot of the kayak companies that sell kayaks as American companies in the United States actually import their kayaks from China, just like I do. Importing products from China isn't as complicated as you might think. It does have a few learning curve items that I'd like to go through in today's video and help you guys along. What I wanted to do today is walk you through the steps of choosing a product, buying the product from China, getting the product put on a boat to be shipped over to the United States, and the process that it takes to bring that product from China to the United States and get it actually to your doorstep. In my particular case, I wanted to buy more than one kayak, not for the purpose of trying to resell and make money, but to reduce the cost of the ultimate kayak that I was going to keep. So when I searched for different products, the first thing that I did was I got online to see what was for sale out there and what was popular. So you go on some of these different kayak sites and I see that the pedal drive is popular. I see that storage under the seat might be popular. Uh, versatility in terms of going from a pedal drive, maybe adding a trolling motor down the road or something like that. Um, so I looked at all the different variables and I picked the boats that I thought that could be adapted, but would also be good boats in general. Once I decided on the products, this is kind of where we'll walk through the whole process for you. The first thing is, where do you even go to start looking at these kayaks from China? And how do you know who is reputable, trustworthy, and you're actually going to get a product once you pay for it? I went to Alibaba.com. I know there's a lot of negativity that swirls around Alibaba with scams and things like that. But in my particular case, I just stayed with vetted um, registered suppliers. That's really all I did. And I looked at their product lines. I spoke with the people on the other side and actually had dialogue and exchanged information to the point where I got comfortable with it. And I can walk you through exactly how that works. Let's take a look at the Alibaba site right now. Now, when you first get to the Alibaba site, you're going to just come to kind of a general page. It's not going to look like there's anything that you're looking for, but you just start typing your query and you might want to be specific in typing kayak or pedal drive kayak. Once you find a company or a kayak that kind of attracts you or has features that you like, you might want to take a minute to kind of watch these videos or some of these processes in their construction of the kayaks. It's pretty interesting. Most of the kayaks that you're going to find are going to be what's called rotomolded, and it's pelletized plastic that is kind of poured into like a mold system, and then it is melted down in high temperatures and re-solidified into the shape that becomes your kayak. And just pour over the information and get really comfortable with what you're looking at before you start to actually make contact and discuss the details. Once you've had some dialogue and messaging back and forth with the manufacturer and you've picked the company that you like that's going to supply the kayaks for the prices that you want, of course, you're going to need a login and a username to get onto the site and uh, to be a qualified purchaser. Now, I'm not sure with Alibaba if you need to be a business or if you can be an individual, but I don't think it's too terribly difficult to become affiliated and get onto the site. So I landed on Ningbo Viking as my company, and I dealt with a person named Frankie Fang, who was very cool, trustworthy, and did exactly what he said he was going to do every time he said he was going to do it. So that's kind of how I started my process. And I would recommend maybe using them as well. Some of the costs considerations or the things that you want to talk about when negotiating with your supplier, you want to know what the exact cost of the product is. Like, what's the price per unit? How many do I have to buy to get that price? And can I buy different ones or do they have to all be the same ones? And ultimately, what's included? What comes in the box when it comes to my house? And then they'll talk to you a little bit about the cost of the shipping from China. There's several layers to different uh, costs. Quite a few, and I'll, I'll show you a breakdown sheet here in just a second. But first of all, you're going to have to get these things built and packaged and to the port in China to be put on a boat. And that is the Chinese shipping cost. A lot of times they'll roll the cost of shipping into the price of their products and they'll tell you that there's zero shipping cost. But in actuality, I think it's three or four hundred bucks to put like four kayaks in a container. Now, once your product is in a boat and on the ocean, it takes a long time to get here. It comes over on one of those big cargo ships. That ship goes into some port near you. It gets taken off with cranes. They piece it all out. They get all the equipment. They get the paperwork. They put it on the destination shipping methods, and they ship it around to where it needs to go. A lot of times you can pick up your products right at the port if you're close to one, or you can have it shipped from the port to a more local 
destination near you. Now, the shipping cost from China is not the whole shipping cost extravaganza, let's say. You're going to have to pay uh, port fees on the United States side. Port fees, I would imagine, I'm not sure exactly what port fees pay for, but I would imagine it pays for the cranes, the manpower, the forklifts, and all the stuff that happens in that port in order to get your equipment off of the boat and ready to ship. In addition to the port fees, ultimately you have to pay taxes on the product when they come into the United States. Now, currently there's about a 25% tariff or tax on products that come into the United States. So if you buy something that costs $1,000 and gets shipped to you, then your tax is going to be $250. It's kind of steep. There's different methods of shipping. There's air and then there's sea. Um, but obviously with something the size of a kayak, you're going to be stuck with uh, sea travel. The shipping time frame for all of this was about, I would say, the whole entire cycle, 60 days. 30 days for it to make it to our port in New York, and then to get to me closer to Dulles, uh, it was another two to three weeks. So allow yourself about 60 days. You'll probably realistically end up with the kayaks in about six to seven weeks. Here's where I would give you some of the best advice. When you get this stuff on the shipping container in China and it's in route, the Chinese manufacturer will give you several documents. The first one he's going to give you is the bill of lading, which is uh, basically the paperwork that describes what's on the boat and what boat it's on and where it's being shipped from and how, you know, the whole gamut there. The other thing they're going to give you is a receipt for the purchase, which is going to have your purchase price that you paid them. And that purchase price is going to be what you pay the taxes on on the U.S. side, the 25%. So three documents that you're going to receive, and I'll show you these as we go through it. You're going to get a uh, bill of lading for combined transport, and that's going to be basically the whole breakdown on what's being shipped, who it's being shipped with, and where it's going. And then you're going to get a commercial invoice, which is the invoice that came from the manufacturer for the kayaks that you bought. It basically represents what you paid them, and that's the amount that you're going to pay taxes on on the U.S. side. And then you're going to um, get a packing list that's going to show what's packaged inside of your you know, shipping. It's going to talk about your pedals, your seat, and all your boxes and all that. And then ultimately, you're going to get an ISF form, and I don't even know what that is. You're going to get all that paperwork. And the reason I'm saying that this next step is very important for you to follow through on is I didn't try to burden myself with a learning curve that was impossible. I leaned on somebody to help me get all this stuff taken care of. Now, there's a company called Easy ISF. And basically what Easy ISF does is they say, hey, Joe, we know you're not an importer exporter and you don't know the ropes. So what you can do is sign on. This is kind of freaky by the way it sounds, but you basically give them power of attorney to act on your behalf to facilitate this import. So what they will do is they'll take all your documents that you get from the Chinese side. You then provide them to Easy ISF. You pay them 50 bucks and it's well worth it. And they take care of registering you with um, customs. They take care of getting your products imported and taken care of to the U.S. And then if you pay them on the back end another 90 bucks, then they will take care of clearing all your paperwork and getting your product ready to be picked up. You literally do nothing. At the end, you're going to pay all your fees. So you, you first pay China the price for the kayaks and their shipping. That's like phase one. And then when things get shipped over here and they make it to the U.S., you then pay your taxes, your port fees, and then you pay anything else that you have to pay at that time. And once you've paid all those fees and your stuff is sitting at the warehouse to be picked up, then your product will be what they call cleared, and you can go over there and pick it up with your paperwork. And that's where Easy ISF comes in, and they really make things a lot easier for you because you don't have to kind of know how to do all that stuff and where to go and where to send it, and you don't make mistakes. That's the biggest thing. Now, when the shipment arrives, you want to Make sure you kind of carefully inspect everything and make sure that nothing is damaged because you want to fill out a damage claim if something got broken or messed up. One thing I did notice was the forklift guy when I picked up my equipment. Yeah, I've been waiting seven or eight weeks. And he comes in there and he's like trying to get the forklift under my three or four kayaks that are all bundled up in plastic. And he's like shoving it around. It's sliding across the ground. And I'm jumping out like, whoa, 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 don't, don't. And so finally had to tell him, can you go a little slower for me, please? These are kind of important, you know, so. They're just moving products so much that I don't think they care. So yeah, once you get your kayaks, you get them home to your house. It's time to just pull them apart and assemble. Um, It's probably nice to reach back out to the supplying company and let them know you received everything. Uh, Keep the relationship open for round two if you decide to get more. 
Yeah, and really enjoy it. Now, the products that you get from China are going to be hit and miss. You're going to find some that are going to be awesome, some that may not be so great. The fit and finish on some of this stuff, uh, you might have to tighten some screws and double check some things. But all in all, I think they're really competitive with what you can get here. The reasons I decided to buy multiple kayaks. One was to make sure that I picked one that I liked. So I wasn't sure what kind of kayak I would want. So in my first order, I ordered three actual different kayaks. One was a 12-footer, one was a 13-footer, one was a 10 and a half. I had my eyes on the 10 and a half for some of the features that it had. I said to myself, ultimately, if it was a bad kayak, meaning it didn't feel stable or it didn't function properly, I'd probably go with one of the others. Or if I didn't like any of them, I could just sell all three and try again. But I did end up with the 10 footer. I like it. I'm going to keep it for a while and see how that works out for me. The nice thing about buying three is I tested three. I had three different options. I got two different kinds of drives. So I got to really sample you know, the kayak experience before I decided on which one to keep. So that was kind of why I ordered three to begin with. Um, The other reason I ordered three was you're going to maximize your shipping. The shipping bottom line is going to be a certain price. There's a floor on the shipping costs. It, It doesn't go much lower than a certain amount. So you're better off ordering two or three. And you might say, well, Joe, I don't want to spend that much money. The problem is by the time you pay the flat rate shipping, and you buy one, then the price that you buy one with all the shipping from China, then you might as well go somewhere around here and buy something local because there's no price benefit at that point. You're better off buying three or four and then selling, you know, on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, the other three to offset the cost. And I'll show you how that works here uh, in just a second. So this is my kayak breakdown of my second round. I've ordered another round of kayaks because I am getting one for a friend. So here's how it breaks down. Let's say we have four kayaks. I bought one with a swivel seat, which I'm going to convert over to my kayak. And I have four carts for the four kayaks that I bought. Now, all the kayaks come with uh, paddles, seats, and carts, like a couple of wheels, you know, you can roll them around with. Um, So you can see that's pretty competitive price. Four kayaks for 2,100 bucks. You couldn't touch that in the U.S., but that's not the end of the story. Then you have the China tax and port fees, which was 150 bucks. The processing fee on the China side was 50 bucks. And that's pretty much all I had to pay for it because they rolled the shipping into the 2100. Uh, but I had the China tax and the port fee. Now, the processing fee, I, I guess that's just uh, the manpower to take it from the factory to the port and the time and all that stuff. So on my side, now it's on the ocean, it's traveling in a boat, and it's going to come over to my side. Before it gets here, I contact Easy ISF, and I provide them with all the paperwork that China gave me. And they do that through the uh, messaging app on Alibaba. And then you take all that information, you say, hey, Easy ISF, send me all the forms I need to sign, and here's all the paperwork from China, and here's $50. Will you take care of this for me? They set up everything that needs to happen to get this stuff into the U.S. Now, the next line is the U.S. port fees, and that's estimated at 400. It depends on what you're buying, how much it is, how large it is, how much it weighs, all that stuff. Mine's somewhere between 350 and 450, so I hit 400 in the middle. The next line you have is the U.S. 25% tariff tax on the products. Now, they don't bill you for the shipping that's rolled into the sales price. They bill you the 25% on the product price. That's why it doesn't seem like it's exactly 25% of 2100 because 2100 is not exactly the cost of the kayaks. It's the cost of the kayaks plus shipping. So... The tariff tax is factored at about 350. I have to ship to International Dulles, which is an extra leg of shipping to make it more convenient for me. So it hits New York and then it gets shipped down here to IAD and then I get everything that I need over here close to my house. Now, before I can pick things up at the IAD, that's when the second round of Easy ISF takes place and they come in and for $90, they clear all my paperwork and they even pay my fees. I pay them back but they pay the fees. They actually pay the port fees and the tax and everything to clear the paperwork. And then I just write them one big check and I'm done. So the easy ISF company um, is about $170 for everything that they do for me. And I think it's worth it. You could save some money and do it yourself, but honestly, it's not worth it. So the first two that I have, I have somebody that wants to buy them for $1,300 each, which is a pretty good price for a fin drive kayak that's 12 feet long. Uh, These two that I'm selling kind of look like Hobies. Um, They're $2,700. I know I'm going to get that money for those. I'm going to sell a third for at least $1,100 on um, 
Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, somebody will buy that for 1100 bucks because it's just hard to find any pedal kayaks under $1,500 in the States right now. And then the fourth one, I have the option of keeping. You can see at the bottom line, even if I keep the fourth one at this point, I have 250 bucks in my hand and a kayak. That's pretty incredible. Um, and that's with uh, hitting the, the cost benefit of four. If I go down to three, then I lose the leverage and I'm out of pocket just a little bit. But if I sell the fourth, I've actually made $1,340 um, for all my efforts. Now, is $1,340 a good income for 60 days worth of fiddling around with this stuff and potentially something going wrong? I don't know. I'm not looking to start some kind of kayak business. But what I am saying is if you want to get a kayak for cheap or next to nothing, order four, sell three, and you're going to end up about zero for your fourth kayak. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I just wanted to share all this with you guys because I knew that there'd be a lot of people that would want to know how this worked. I'm not trying to convince you to buy kayaks from China, and I'm not telling you you're going to get some kind of kayak that compares to like a native or an old town or some kind of really high-end product from the U.S. But if you're like me and you're always looking for a deal, this could be a cool way to uh, experience something new, learn something, and get a good product out of it all. So let me know your thoughts. If you have questions, I'm sure you'll have many. Uh, just hit me below. I'll do my best to respond back and give you more information about this. And uh, if you decide to do this on your own and you need some help along the way, just ping me. I'll jump in and help you if I can. Otherwise, um, you guys take care. Tight lines. Have a good one.